I am Erica Bragg. I am the Georgia Salzburger Society's Research Committee Chair and am so happy to be such. This is the second year family workshop that I presented yesterday, June 4th, 2022, in the Jerusalem Lutheran Church Social Hall. Now, we originally scheduled the workshop for um, to be held in our second year boardroom at the GSS Parsonage, but we had such a good response to this workshop that we exceeded our boardroom's comfortable capacity and we moved to the larger social hall and I'm glad to have been able to do that and thankful that the church um, was available for us to do. Now we had 27 people in attendance and it was such fun to get to visit with cousins and meet new cousins and talk about our, our combined heritage, our common heritage and also just our interest in the fact that we're all Georgia Salzburger descendants, whether we're second year descendants or not. So I presented, um, I compiled this slideshow and it starts here with the home that my grandma was born in. My grandma was a second year, the youngest daughter of Herschel and Minnie second year, and this was their family home. And um, I just love this house the home of Herschel and Minnie Seconder. Now, if you would like the Seconder workshop note sheet, it is actually available by emailing the GSS office and it is two pages. So first page and second page is actually half a page, but it has so much content that my note sheet extended well beyond one page. Now our second year family history begins way back in 1700s to the country of Germany. Our second years were a German family. Now we're focusing specifically, and of course this is a modern day map, um, on this state in the southwest corner of Germany, Baden-Württemberg, and it is the very southernmost and westernmost state in Germany. Specifically the Black Forest, and I just pulled these maps off of Wikipedia. The Black Forest, and you see the southwesternmost corner of Germany. That's the second year, um, point of origin, town of origin. It looks just beautiful, beautiful country. And they had snow in the winter, and then the second years came to Georgia where there's no snow. Now this is a really cool map, the 1716 map, and here we have their town of Rittenberg. And um, there it is in the Black Forest, right there. And I know I am not saying it exactly correctly because these umlaut O's give me trouble. Um, it is not the town of Rittenberg, completely different town. Here we have the Rhine River, the Rhine River, the Black Forest. Important to remember when we're talking about immigration from out of this area. Now this is a, this is the church, the evangelical church in the town, and it's just a, a beautiful church. This is a portrait that is in the GSS Museum, and it's the um, church that the Seconder, uh, Seconder family members were married at, born at, some of them died, their funerals were here. We're going to start with the birth of our second juror uh, ancestor, the man that we all descend from if we're second jurors in Georgia, uh, Matthias. There were three second jurors that immigrated, but Matthias is the only one documented to have had children. This is his baptism record. This is what the German church books look like. I love getting to look through them so we're going to focus on this one right here I'm going to zoom it in and we see the 11th of February in 1717 Matthias the son of Christoph Seckinger a citizen and bucket maker from here that is uh, Rotenberg and his wife Katharina Matthias was baptized on that day now we're going to the church book from the town of Bach because Matthias is future wife was also born in 1717. Anna Katharina right here. Her baptism is June 3rd, 
She is the daughter of Christian Gunther, a farmer from Bach, and his wife, Maria. Now, I was doing the dry run of the workshop on June 3rd, and we had it set up on our den television, and my daughter said, that's today, so 305 years later, on June 3rd, I was rehearsing the workshop the day before I presented it, June 4th, so that's just amazing how that time, that timeline added up. Um, in 1717, here we are, our ancestor, Anna Katharina Gunther's baptism. Just amazing. Now, here we have the church book showing the marriage of Matthias and Katharina in 1740. Now, we're going to be looking at this one here, number 496, but in the seconder family, 495 is also important, so we're going to look at both of them. I'm going to zoom it in. Number 496, our ancestor Matthias. So on July 25th, the Christian marriage service for Matthias and his wife, Anna Katharina Gunther, was performed July 25th. So we have this, um, his father, so Matthias Seconder, bucket maker, um, the previously mentioned Christoph Seconder, the surviving son. I was like, what in the world does that mean? So look it up, and it's the person that was just mentioned. Well, who was just mentioned? Christoph Seconder, because his other son, Matthias's older brother, George, Hans George, had just been married July 13th. So the brothers, Hans George and Matthias, appear back to back in the church registry, in the, in the marriage record in 1740. That's just so interesting to me. So Christoph Seconder's... Um, son and his wife was Katharina Fuchs and they she went on to be the mother of nine sons. So yes, there are Seckingers in Germany and most likely descended from Christoph Seckinger and then Hans George. Now, this is the following year. This is a baptism um, record for Christian. The first son of Matthias and Katharina was named Christian and he was baptized May 13th, 1741. So we have the parents, Matthias Seconder, a bucket maker from here, and Anna Katharina, his wife. So Christian Wesner and Miller from Bach and uh, Christian Schwab, Matthias Schwab's um, son, single son, and then Christina Wesner, uh, Jacob Wesner's uh, daughter. So we have people from Bach in the baptism, being the baptism sponsors for Christian Seconder, and that is because Anna Katharina was born there. Now, we have very important notation written a few years later, likely 1749, maybe even 1750, that this Christian he went to in the year 1749 to Pennsylvania. <clears throat> Excuse me, this is a German spelling for Pennsylvania, so we've got P E N S Y L V A N I E N. <clears throat> this Christian he went to Pennsylvania, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Now, here is the next child. This is the baptism record for Maria Katharina. Matthias Second, your bucket maker from here, and Anna Katharina, his wife, is um, is in the so-called New World. So Ma Maria Katharina, her baptism record, years later, 1749, 1750, a little notation was written there by the pastor that this person had also gone to the New World. So this is the 13th of August, 1742, that Maria Katharina was baptized. Same baptism sponsors as Christian. That is typically the case with uh, these German uh, baptisms. Now, next we're going to be looking at 1744. A new pastor who's writing in uh, Latin, so it's English letters <laughs> instead of German ones, so this is very easy to read. Um, January 24th, 1744. We have Johann George, the son of Matthias Seconder and Anna Katharina, and that just says Gunther. They've written her maiden name, which is wonderful when pastors do that. Now we take note of this cross that's been written here, but it's been stricken. 
um, whenever you see, I'm going to go back to the baptism registry, whenever you see a child in the baptism registry with a cross below its name, that means that child has died. If the person stayed in the town, zoom it in a fuzz, stayed in the town and died as an adult, you see a, a year. Sometimes you see a date. But Johann George Seconder being baptized January 24th, the cross was accidentally put there because Johann George that was born to this Armbruster family uh, two days previously, he did die. And so the pastor just went back and put the wrong cross there. So Johann George Seconder had a cross put by his name, below his name, but it was marked out because it was a mistake. Now we're going to move on to Christina right here. And unfortunately, we see a cross by her name uh, that says 8BR. That is how we uh, know that's an abbreviation for October, 8 being oct. Uh, so October the 2nd, 1745, we have Christina. There's her cross uh, because she died as a child. Matthias Seconder, bucket maker, the same exact sponsors. Um, this is 1747. This is the death record of Christina. And we're also going to talk about this death record right here. But first we're going to talk about Christina. I'm going to zoom in. So on the 20th of May, they've had a Christian funeral service for Christina, Matthias Seconder, citizen and bucket maker from here, his uh, deceased little daughter, age one year, seven months. And on the 22nd of the same, that is May, she was buried. So, 20th of May, the 19 month old child, Christina, of Matthias and Katharina Seconder, uh, has died. Now, we're going to look right here to May 26th. The fun event that happened that, uh, to Johann, excuse me, Hans George and Matthias Seconder, brothers back to back, 1740. Um, marriage record 1747 they're appearing pretty much back to back in the death record because they both lost a child at the same time so we have the 20th of may for christina that we just talked about the 26th of may is the death of matthias who is the little son of hans george seconder citizen and bucket maker from here his uh, deceased child age one year and um, on the 26th of May, the 26th of the same, actually, excuse me, that says 28th, I apologize, the 28th of the same month, being May, he was buried. So the brothers appear back to back in a joyous occasion of a marriage, and they also appear back to back in the devastating occasion of the loss of their children. But also in 1747, a blessed event occurs to take away some of that sadness. And we're going to be talking about right here. I'm going to zoom in on the birth of Anna Seconder, the fifth child of Matthias and Cath Anna Katharina, to be born in Germany. Born on Christmas Day, 1747. What a, um, what a sweet um, event to follow up such tragedy. Trage trage tragedy, getting all my words mixed up. Was it such a sad event? Um, and then it's just such happiness. It's just beautiful whenever you think about it. Anna, Knock, Pennsylvania. Anna went to Pennsylvania as well. So here's the fifth child born to Matthias and Anna Katharina in Germany. The third one to have the notation of she went to Pennsylvania or she went to the New World. Same exact um, uh, baptism sponsors as the previous children. Now, we have, that was 1747, we have the Seconder family immigrating in 1749. Now, the Rhine River is the eastern border of France, everybody knows that. It's also the western border of Germany, and that's why it's important to our Georgia Salzburger immigration history, because the Rhine River is a mode of transportation to get these Palatines from even southern Germany the central part of Germany on up to Rotterdam because we see the delta of the Rhine is pretty much the Netherlands. So 
when we're leaving here in the Black Forest, well, I say we, but when they were leaving here in the Black Forest, and even in, you know, Austria, um, where some of our, our Salzburg ancestors came from, um, we have the Black Forest being right here at the Rhine, and we're pretty much right here in our town of, well, right here below, there's Karlsruhe, so right about here, the very southern portion of the Black Forest for the Seconders, you come up the Rhine River to get to the Netherlands. Then, at this time, you had to go to either Dover or, or um, London, which London is on the eastern uh, it's a, um, coast of England. And then you had to swear your oath to the king of England and become an American citizen to get to go to, an American subject rather, to get to go to, uh, in this case, Georgia. Now, when the Seconders were leaving, the Palatines were immigrating in large numbers, thousands, untold thousands of Palatines were immigrating to Pennsylvania, the port of Philadelphia specifically. And that immigration there is prevalent in the 1710s, 20s, and even in the 30s. Well, this is 1749. And um, previously, in 1746, a Palatine uh, transport coming to Ebenezer was waylaid, hijacked, whatever you want to call it, by Spanish Corsairs, and that was held for ransom. And by the time the Georgia trustees paid the ransom, um, some of the Germans went back to Germany, and then others, instead of heading to Pennsylvania, they went on down to Georgia. So that is likely the case of why these Palatines on this ship, 1749 transport, went to Georgia instead of coming across the northern routes in the Atlantic. They come south. This Palatine transport, the second uh, possible potential port, was going to be South Carolina, but they were encouraged to go to Georgia because the uh, Salzburgers at Ebenezer were in need of indentured servants. And so the seconders on this fifth Palatine transport were indentured servants. Now we're going to talk about that in a minute. But Rhine River, that's why it's important to Palatine immigration mode of transportation. Now, one fascinating document that is on the Georgia Digital Library is the, is the agreement of Peter Bogg to uh, carry Germans to Georgia. In um, June of 1749, this was signed, and it's his indenture, his contract, for bringing the Germans to Georgia. 63 Germans arriving on the Charlestown Galley. These are a few of them that arrived, not all of them by any means, arriving in Georgia in Savannah, October 2nd, 1749. Now, this is a, a list of, a partial list of the indentured servants that Pastor Boltzius wrote, and it's, it's found in the uh, Colonial Records of Georgia. If you ever get to look at those, um, the whole entire list is in there. This is just his handwritten in English list. It says, a list of the servants of the Salzburgers at Ebenezer in Georgia. The very first one, Matthias Seconder, Anna Katharina, his wife, five small children, one being born lately. Uh, Anna Katharina Seconder immigrates from her beautiful, comfy um, town in Germany. Very, very pregnant. Seven months pregnant, probably. Maybe six, I don't know. She takes a 4,000 plus mile journey on a wooden ship across the Atlantic and she arrives at Ebenezer, excuse me, at Savannah, October 2nd, 1749, and has either has her baby while she's at sea or soon after arriving in Savannah. Amazing. What a strong lady to go through such conditions and have a baby. Now, um, Andrew Seconder, his his brother, meaning Matthias's brother, Andrew is just the English way of saying Andreas. Katharina, his wife, no children born to Andrew, Andreas, excuse me, and his wife, because they had just gotten married. Lucia Seconder, his sister, Matthias's sister. Servants to me. So our Seconder ancestors arrived in Ebenezer and they were the indentured servants to Pastor Boltzius. Now, 
Katharina, the wife of Andreas. Here we look right here, Jacob Moore, Anna Mary, his wife, uh, two small children, and their daughter, Katharina, having married Andrew Seconder. So that um, Katharina Seconder gets to Georgia, she has a baby. Andrew Seconder gets to Georgia, Andreas Seconder, excuse me, gets to Georgia, he gets married. So very interesting. We know the marriage took place because Pastor Boltzius wrote of it in this list. And I was just focusing in on these individual ones and I just discussed them all so I'm going to scoot right through them. 63 German people arrived fresh and sound in Savannah on the 3rd and 4th of this month being October. One was born at sea and still another soon after the arrival in Savannah. So two ladies traveling heavily pregnant delivering their children one at sea one in savannah amazing um sadly we don't know the name of that child or even if if the child was a boy or a girl because the baby died now this is a quote from one of the detail reports god has reminded us this week of our, of our mortality through the deaths of three other children who belonged to the servant Seconder and Huber. Two were sucklings and one a little girl who was very swollen by a foul fever. Um, December 1750 was when he wrote this entry. I think it was December 13th he wrote this. So the baby that was born to Katharina um, in 1749 did not live but a year. The infant mortality and even the, you know, the even the adults, there's so much death and um, at Ebenezer because it was just such a wilderness. It's very sad. Now, we have the man that most of the Seconders in Georgia descend from, Jonathan Seconder. Um, he was the son of Matthias and his wife Anna Katharina. He was born July 31st, 1759. He was baptized the next day, August 1st. That's the common amount of time that passes between birth and baptism in the Lutheran Church. The babies were baptized soon after birth. Now, two years later, we have the youngest child uh, that Matthias and Anna Katharina have. She was uh, Lucia, born June 7th, 1760, and she was baptized in the church. And at this time, the Jerusalem church was a wooden structure that was built in 1741. Now, Matthias Seconder died. July 22nd, 1761. He was buried that later that afternoon in the town cemetery. He was 44 years old. So such a young man. Um, should have been, you know, very strong, not necessarily in his prime. He would have been in his prime definitely in his 20s and 30s, but still should have been such a strong man. Why, what in the world happened? Um, there was so much work that had to be done. These men were taming a wilderness and they didn't have machines to help them. So there was exposure, there was exhaustion. July, there was probably a heat stroke. Um, I know that in, in a few minutes we're gonna be looking at one of the German records that Pastor Boltzius wrote in 1763, two years after Matthias' death. And we're talking about how sick Andreas is. So the men were, you know, they they got sick a lot just like everybody else and so this young man uh, dying went and leaving his wife with young children buried in the town cemetery these are this picture was taken by my daughter just a beautiful picture of the gates of the cemetery now Matthias's grave was marked had to have been marked with a wooden marker a lot of unmarked graves are on this side of the cemetery gates and so that's why I don't park right out there outside the cemetery gates because there are graves there. The underground radar wasn't done until a few years after the gates were put down so um, when you're walking up to the gates you're actually walking on graves. Anyway, let's move on. So here we have the children of Matthias and Katharina. Now we know of the births of these three, uh, Christian, Maria, Katharina, and Johann George, and we know they immigrated because Pastor Boltzius says how many children the Seconders had, but we don't know when, there's not a document to prove when they died. It's not mentioned 
Now, Maria Katharina, she would be about the age in 1750 to be called one little girl swollen by a very foul fever and died the, about the, um, the detailed report quote I just showed you. That could have been a reference to her. I believe it was referring to a Huber girl that died. But we do not have a record of the deaths of these three um, because the Ebenezer record books, the, uh, the front part of it is missing or lost. It doesn't begin until 1754 and 55, and so these children uh, could have died sometime in that time range. Christina is the one that died while living in Germany. She's buried there. Anna, um, she went on to live until the 1820s. And then the infant that died, Andrew Seconder, the son of Matthias and Katharina, there's not a record that he's the son of Andreas. He just has that same name, which is common for um, people in this time period to be recycling names and honoring their relatives by naming the child after a relative. So then we have this gap here of children that are certain to have been born to Matthias and Katharina. We just don't have a record of them. And then we have Lucia, and she died as a fairly young woman. Now... We're going to talk about the, the documented lives of the four younger second-year children that we know about um, that lived to be adults. So Anna, we, taught, we, shot, we saw her baptism. Uh, she arrived in Georgia with her parents. Uh, she's in the Ebenezer record book. There's her marriage to John Paul Miller. And there's the birth of her one son. Her husband dies. She remarries to Johannes Maurer and has a child the following year. And then she does die. She lives in the county and she does die in the 1820s sometime. I just zoomed in and I apologize. Andrew Seconder, he um, was born in Ebenezer and that's just an estimate, 1751, could have been born in 1752. Then his marriage to a lady named Anna Katharina. Her maiden name is unknown and that's why I always stress when I research, we've got to um, you know, try to be um, mindful of these maiden names that can get lost to history because in the 1700s, some of these ladies, their families are unknown. Their families are unknown because their maiden names are lost. And that's really sad to me. Um, so whenever we have kids that come to Ebenezer and talk to them about genealogy, I always try to encourage them to find out about the ladies in their families because of the marriages and the maiden names get replaced by married names and that's fine but don't let that history get lost by forgetting the maiden name because that happened even in modern times with my grandfather he didn't even know his grandmother's maiden name so Andrew and Anna Katharina maiden name unknown their children Christiana John Gottlieb and Katharina these two sisters this one died, and this one went on to marry this one's husband, Valentine Kessler. So we have Kesslers who are descendants of Seconders. The Andrew's death in Effingham County is 1803, and that's well documented, and I'll show you that in a minute. Hannah Elizabeth Seconder is someone who's listed as dying in the Ebenezer record book, and she is said to be a daughter of Andrew and Katharina. Um, she could have been a daughter of Matthias and Katharina, just an older lady, you know, maybe someone, cl a young lady close to um, you know, it, her late teens and maybe even 20 years old because of that time that we don't even know the other names of the children of Matthias and Katharina, if they had any to survive. So this girl is said to be a daughter of them. There's nothing to prove that that I have found. Now, this is going back to the death of Andrew Seconder, the son of Matthias and Katharina, at a court of ordinary held in Springfield on Saturday, the 25th day of February, um, 1804. This is a recording all of what they had done. So on the, um, let's see, September 5th, 1803 to Mrs. Katharina, Catherine, excuse me, Seconder on the estate of her husband, Andrew Seconder. So this is not the immigrant Andreas, but it is his nephew, Andrew, 1803. Now, Jonathan Seconder, the um, next to the youngest child of Matthias and Katharina, 
We have his birth in the Ebenezer record book. His marriage is not recorded, but we do have a, um, a record of Maria Frederica's grandfather's death and the land that was um, being divided up among the survivors of her grandfather and she and her husband Jonathan are both named and the rest of, the, of her siblings are named as well. Very important document in our county um, to confirm the children of John Shirouse of whom she is the oldest daughter. Now their children, this is very interesting because I just made a discovery two days ago. It's not on this page but let's look at their children that those are documented, they're in our red books. We know about these kids. Anna Katharina having two different husbands because of the death of this one naturally. John Christopher marrying Anita Ron. Benjamin is one um, who moved down to South Georgia. His wife being a Zittrauer. Naomi marrying a Biddenbach and her death. I don't even have an estimate for her death. Sally marrying Joshua Helmy, who became Joshua Helmy Sr. And uh, Joshua, um, that most of us are descended from, marrying uh, Salome or Salome niece. Dorothy being the youngest daughter, we thought she was unmarried and she was enumerated in the 1860 census, so we know she lived at least through there, uh, through then. Now, one thing that I just found in this book, in this fantastic letters of Johann Ernst Bergman, recently published in February. If you don't have one, go to brill.com, B-R-I-L-L.com, and get one. Um, Dr. Cleckley did amazing work getting this translated. On September 30th, 1805, we learn of the death of the six-year-old child who would be the youngest of Jonathan and Frederica because look right here I'm gonna go back Dorothy being born in 1796 is not the youngest here the six-year-old born in about 1798 would have been the youngest um, he was the son uh, the child excuse me the child of mr. Jonathan Seconder a church elder now the child was committed to the earth on this day the man, so we're talking back about Jonathan Seconder, is upright and one of the best in the community. That's amazing to get to see the pastor say that about your ancestor. One of the best in the community. Um, and it says he was sickly. So the following sentences talk about how it was a terrible downpour after this and the people trying to get back home were soaked and Jonathan Seconder ended up with a really bad fever but recovered. Um, just really sad, but it's really interesting to find a new reco a discovery and why, um, you know, why didn't we know about this previously? Because the only record was in German. So that's why we still have to work on and focus on these German records that we, that we don't have translated yet. They're important. So much is left to be found. Now, since we're talking about um, Jonathan Seconder and his wife, Maria Frederica, this is the a birth that Maria Frederica Schiraus went through as a single woman at about 19 years old. Um, she has a daughter from John Martin Dasher, the son of Martin Dasher, the immigrant. Um, John Martin Dasher Sr. is what he was called, was not a very good man. And um, there's so much information in the Bergman letters about John Martin Dasher Sr. and Jr. It's jaw-dropping, in my opinion. But Salome, Salome, that's how my grandma calls it. Uh, she had an aunt named Aunt Lomi, so that's how they pronounce this, Salome. Um, she was baptized, excuse me, she was born May 23rd, and she was baptized a hundred days later. September 2nd. So that is very rare in the Lutheran Church to have someone baptized so long after birth. It's usually, you know, hours after birth that the person is baptized. But Maria Frederica Schraus went on to marry Jonathan Seconder. 
Now, Lucia Seconder, the youngest child of Matthias and Katharina, born at Ebenezer, we have her birth in the Ebenezer record book, she marries Christian Shiptrine. Their children, Gottlieb and Hannah, and then Lucia dies in sometime in the mid 1790s. This is a petition that Jonathan Seconder filed in order to become the guardian of Gottlieb and Hannah Shiptrine, his niece and nephew, uh, because Christian Shiptrine, their father, had died. This was filed in um, February uh, 1800. He is um, granted guardianship of his niece and nephew. Now, because so many of us descend from Joshua Seconder, I included their children here. Mary Ann marrying a BB, John L. Groven, John L. Seconder marrying Mary Grovenstein, and they died. Look at that, how close together they died. They had one child, Elmira, and she um, was an infant, and was she went on to marry a um, a Ganan. So then we have Joshua Jr. marrying a Cochran. We have Ephraim marrying Lydia Arnstorf. She died after five children. Henrietta Morgan, she died after 10 children. Lavinia Fryermuth, she had no children because they were older when they got married. Susan Seconder died. Um, she never got married. She's buried right beside her brother Ephraim at Bethel. William Henry, he actually died. He was murdered. Um, that was very interesting to read about that. Uh, first wife, Lydia Schraus. Second wife, Sophia Wieser. Frederick Richard Seconder being married three times as well to Elizabeth and Christina, who were sisters. And then Salome Catherine marrying Christian Edward Zipperer, Elizabeth and Christina's brother. Thomas Elbert Seconder, the youngest. Lavinia Catherine Arnstorf is his wife. Lydia Christine Arnstorf's sister. So brothers marrying sisters here. And then the sister and the brother marrying the brother and the sister from the opposite family. So anyway, lots of double first cousins, which is always so interesting to me. Now, we have talked about Matthias and Katharina, their children, and then that was just the son of Jonathan being Joshua. We're going to go back up to the immigrant uh, generation because there were three children of Christoph and Katharina Seconder that immigrated to Georgia. We're going to look here at Andreas, the immigrant. I'm going to zoom in. October 4th, 1722, Andreas is baptized. His father's nickname here, we know his name is Christoph, so his nickname there is Stoffel. <laughs> Seconder, bucket maker from here, and Katharina, his wife. So that is Andreas Seconder. He, there's his birth in his immigration. He was married to Katharina Moore right there in 1749 or 1750, depending on, you know, what you put in your family tree, based on the letter of the list of um, indentured servants Pastor Boltzius wrote. Now, Katharina died. She died before the records of Ebenezer are, um, most likely before the records of Ebenezer, you know, begin. He did remarry. Um, he married a lady, Agnesia Hermann. She was a widow Ziegler. Her husband, Michael Ziegler, had died in 1754. So Andreas married to Agnesia May 17, 1756, and then he wrote his will in 1772 and died in 1776. So let's look at Agnesia's baptism. She was born in a town near Geislingen, Germany, so she was called, she was known as a Swabian. And so her birth, that says 10 births, so 10 being December. Um, then we have in Pennsylvania, a little reference written below her uh, name in the baptism document. She was born in 1709, so she was a good bit older than Andreas. She had um, two children to survive to being adults and... Um, from the Ziegler man. She immigrated with four children. Now, I mentioned we were going to be looking at uh, some information about Andreas being so sick. So here we have his really cool name written in German by Pastor Boltzius. He had such a fever 
he was so sick from a fever that his death, they just knew his death was near. But, you know, God, um, God healed him. And um, so that's just, that is so interesting to get to read a 41-year-old man being so sick from fever that he was near death. Now, here we have Andrew Seconder. That's how his name is written in English. Uh, writing his last will and testament in 1772. And then, since the day of October 1772, there's his signature. So people think, you know, some people think that whenever you see an X um, in an English document, it means, well, in this time period, in 1700s, you see an English document with an X and it says his mark, and then the Court of Ordinary um, making a little seal right there. That means the person is illiterate or unable to write his own name. Well, no, he's not able to write in Latin letters or in English. And so these are the letters that Andreas Secondary used to sign his name. So interesting. Then we have Agnesia Seconder, right after the death of Andreas, sometime in 1776. She writes her last will and testament, giving her stuff to her only surviving son, Luke, and to her daughter, also named Agnesia. Now, we're going to go to, the, um, to Lucia, the immigrant. This is her baptism record. There she is right there. The first birth baptism rather recorded in 1727, 14th of January, Lucia, the daughter of Christoph Seconder, a bucket maker from here, and Katharina, his wife. Um, and one thing that's really interesting, the, uh, the baptisms, these are the baptism sponsors. This Hans Schneider, it says Burgermeister, that was a, um, that's the mayor of the town, and Hans Michael. Uh, Bueller Richter from Bach. So Richter is a, a judge. So some important people were being the baptism sponsors of Christoph and Katharina Seconder's children. That's very interesting. So no information is known as documented about the adult life of Lucia. We know she immigrated because of that list that Pastor Boltzius wrote. Um, we know she immigrated, but nothing. Um, we don't know for sure if uh, she got married or if she had children, that type of information has been lost or is currently lost, maybe found. Now, this is the title page of our second year book. It has so much information in here. Here it is right here. Newly um, received, whoops, in the museum gift shop. Now, it, it was sold out. It's not been redone, revamped, or anything like that. It's just been, um, it was out of print, and we were able to bring it back. So this is available in the GSS Museum gift shop. If you would like to order one, you can call the office and leave a voicemail, or you can email the office. But thank you very much for watching. There's so much information, and there's such a important family to me because, well, for many reasons, but the main reason is it's my family, but I was so glad to get to see the interest of everybody. We had so many people there yesterday, uh, just enthusiastic and interested in learning more about this family, and I, I really appreciate that. It's encouraging to put something together and, you know, have it all in your head and try to put it together in a presentation and, and then have people um, appreciate or interested in, in learning about it. So it was such fun and I hope to definitely be able to do more of these family workshops. If you have any questions, you can post your question below in the comments or you can email the GSS office and the admin will forward it on to me. So thank you so much for watching.